example, this concentration is ten to the negative two molar concentration. So this guy is ten to the negative four fourth order. So this is hundred times more acidity. Then if that's the case, solution is pH two is how many times more acidity compared to pH six solution? How many times more acidity? What do you think? Thousand times. Thousand. Thousand times. Mm -hmm. Ten thousand. Yeah, ten to four, ten thousand times. Um, you have learned about sink figure, and most instructors will emphasize that is important when you do calculation or when you do experiment. There's also a uh, sink figure concerning our uh, low voltage scale or exponential scale. Sometimes we use uh, scientific notation for the number. One time 10 to the first order is same as 10, this one is 100. The scientific notation, uh, the reason we use uh, scientific notation is because if we're going to use this number and just like that, it will be like oh, 11, 11 zero. So that's not convenient. So scientific notation makes it uh, easier to buy all those numbers. That's one purpose. Another purpose is we emphasize that it's too thick in this number. If we write numbers just like that, um, most time we're gonna consider this as one single figure, right? One single figure, because, because following zero, change is not significant. But if you mean, uh, actually you wanna say these three numbers are significant, then you're gonna have to use 1.00 times 10 to the 11. So that's another purpose of using our scientific notation, okay? So this number has two CP, two CP, one CP. When you use calculator, that scientific notation to just written like this, which means it's the same thing. Whether you write this way, that way, it means the same thing. Uh, using your calculator, using your calculator, why don't you try to calculate logarithm this logarithm of this number. What do you get from your calculator? Logarithm of one point zero. Anybody get a different number than just two? Okay, this is why you do not rely on your calculator, okay? Calculator does not know 60 at all, right? Um, if you say, think that we just two, saying 160. And, no, 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 I, I said, I have to, uh, I have, okay. Two is not accurate because you have one CP here, right? And then you may think this is one CP. This is, there's no CP here. Because anytime when you use a logarithm function, number in front of natural point is not significant. The reason is that, the reason is that 10 to the first, this one will be translated to number one. This number two is actually representing this point to two. In cycling notation, those numbers in the exponent are not significant. The reason we use cycling notation is because number in front of 10 to the power is significant, but these guys are not significant. But when you use logarithm, number in front of decimal point is just indication of exponent. So to emphasize, to emphasize this number has one six feet, but we know this number is not zero. You just intentionally add zero to making sure this number has one CP pair. 
So when you use calculator, calculate logarithm of this number, you get two. Because calculate do not know six bit, you have to, you know, add zero here. Okay. Um, same goes with this guy. Logarithm of this number, uh, your calculator say again five. But that five is just from exponent. This number has two six bit, so you have to put two more zero after that function. So as a practice, why don't you try 3.9 times t4 that's your x. What is logarithm x then? Logarithm x. Logarithm of this guy is what? Let's say 4.59106 in Bitcoin. Then, what should I write? 4.59. That's correct. Because this number has two six bit, but this is not six bit at all. You're going to have to write 4.59. That's good. Let's do opposite. If I have a uh, logarithm number is 5.54, we know this is not significant, but we do have a 260, right? To find the original x, we're going to do 10 to the 5.54. If you use your calculator, 10 to the 5.54 makes 10 to the 5.54. Then I get uh, this number, 34673, 6.8545. Do you get the same answer? Now, since this one had only two safety, my answer should have only two safety. So you're going to have to round up right there. That means your answer should be 3, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay. In something notation, that's the same as 3.5, 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is equal to that. Okay. So I want you to be comfortable with something of uh, uh, six figures of logarithm and exponent. Why we do that? That's because we have the base. pH is something like this. Um, pH is a logarithm of hydrogen concentration, but the only difference from previous example is we just have a negative sign. Then make some components, <coughs> but principally are equal, it's the same. So um, you can put this hydrogen concentration to logarithm to find the pH. If I do that, negative logarithm of this number, 5.5, negative 2, I get. 1.2596 Bitcoin. But this is too sticky. And in pH scale, this is not significant at all. So you have to include two more. And then you round up over here, that makes 1.26. That's why you have 1.26. Hydrogen concentration is, oh, so let's say uh, we have this answer, then uh, if you change this exponent, it only change a number in front of decimal point here, right? So you can just, you don't have to do calculation, you 
can just figure out 2, 1, 11 should be 10 without changing the number here. So if you're not sure, you can just use calculator. Why don't you, why don't you try 6, 7, 6.7, 10 to the minus 3, more than 10 to the, what is the case? So it has two six feet. So you're gonna round up right here. So answer is two point one seven. Pitch is two point one seven. What if your pH is 2.5, uh, it has answer, so why don't we do something else? What if pH is 0 0.357? Then what's the constant of Hazelaya? 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 Can you answer? 0 0.447. 0 0.447? Like that? I think so. Okay. Did it right. Does anyone have a different answer? The concentration is 10 to the negative pH. So if the pH is that, 10 to the negative 0.357. Then I'm going to get 0 0.4395. pH has 3 sig feet. My answer will have 3 sig feet. 0 0.4, 4, 0 more than 10. Does the have the same number? <coughs> My pH is 13. What's the concentration of hydrogen then? How many CP do you see here? Two. Two. Zero. Two. zero. There's a zero CP here, right? There's a zero CP. Why? This is a pH scale. This pH scale, this one has a zero CP. So if you write this on the concentration of hydrogen, this is the right answer. If somebody write this, technically wrong. Why? There's a zero sig feet, and then you, when you write this way, you are saying there's one sig feet there. Mm -hmm. okay? So I'm both things sort of will accept it, but the technically it's not really accurate. Okay? What if your hydrogen concentration is this? How should you write pH then? 13.0. Why? Because there's one sig feet, you have to say 13.0. And then if your constant is 1.0, 1.0 times 10 to minus 13, there are two six feet here, right? We're going to write 13.00. Okay. So that's how you do six feet in uh, pH and uh, concentration. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Okay. 
So why don't you do actual practice? Why don't you uh, calculate number one and then also answer to number two? Did you get all the same number? Did you get the same answer? Or well, do you have any question? Um, so here we use the uh, relation of, so you, you just got the formula of this guy. So I'm using that formula. Again, this is true at 24, 25, 25 Celsius, which is room temperature. Uh, in other cases, it may be slightly different, but we still use it because most times it will be room temperature. Um, by the way, this 14, sometimes you use 14, sometimes you use 14, 0, sometimes you use 14, 0, depending on the problem. Okay. 
here I just using 14 because px was given as 4. So I just you know match the simple figure here. But when poh given 5.4, I'm using this number as instead of 14, using 14.0 4, because it has one more decimal here. Okay. So depending on the problem, you may want to add more zero. Pretty good at remembering all those names, you know, your classmate name. So I don't see any problem you remembering, you know, seven strong axes. <laughs> um, okay, what is seven strong axis? Funny. Two C L. Okay, that's fine. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, so there are seven strong axes. Uh, they are coming from uh, oh, projected so far away. Um, so seven strong axes coming uh, HCL, HDR, HI. There's two more from here, HCL03, HCL04, then make it five, HCL03, HCL04, then make it seven. Nitric axis, sulfuric axis, Hydrochloric acid, hydrobonic acid, hydroiodic acid, chloric acid, perchloric acid. What is the chemical formula for perchloric acid? Which one is perchloric acid here? HClO4. Yeah, HClO4 is perchloric acid. So this will be just chloric acid. Okay. So um, you memorize those seven strong acid. Then any other acid, which means some compound starting with H, blah, blah, this is likely acid. Not always true, but most times that will be acid. This will be weak acid. So that's not one of those. Okay. Um, now, strong acid is, so HCl is one of strong acid. Strong acid means when you put strong acid in the water, they completely dissociate, hundred percent, practically hundred percent. Okay, so let's say you have this guy as 0 0.20 molar concentration. Then in the water, practically every every one of them will dissociate. So you're gonna have 0 0.2 molar concentration of carbon uh, <coughs> ion, also same 0 0.2 molar concentration of chloride ion. Then practically this guy will be zero. Once it dissociates, you may not find, you know, any concentration. That's what strong acid means. But other acid, beyond this seven strong acid, like HF, if you dissolve this guy in the water, some of them dissociate, but most of acid will just stay intact. It doesn't dissociate. So most of them stay here, only few of them dissociate just like that. That's a characteristic of weak action. But for strong action, this guy will completely dissociate. That's why we use single arrow. Single arrow means the action goes completion to that direction. For weak action, we use a double arrow. Some of them dissociate, but they come back to the reaction. So that's weak action. So this is weak acid, like your HF, hydrochloric acid, this is acetic acid, another popular um, common weak acid. So it dissociates to hydrogen ion, no, hydrogen ion and acetate, but only part of it dissociate, most of them will come back. So you have more of reactant than this produced you know, product. That's the characteristic of weak acid. Um, there will be a bit extra material. I think you have handout. You have handout. 
Let's just you know uh of what we did. So if actually for our test case. If you have any actually like uh nitric acid. Nitric acid is one of seven strong acids. It dissociates, give a proton ion and nitrate. So whatever you have, let's say you have uh, two molar concentration, then once you dissociate, you have <coughs> two molar, two molar, and then you have nothing, uh, nothing left on the left hand side. Um, on the other hand, weak exit, well, actually I, I did this one already. Uh, for weak exit, only partially dissociate. What about this? You put sulfuric acid in the water. What should I write after that? Huh? Sulfuric acid, is that strong acid or weak acid? Strong acid. So it will completely dissociate, right? Single arrow. So it will release proton. And by sulfate. So this is what you want to have to write. But it has, it does have two protons. So why don't we write this? What about this? Is that right? It's not right because sulfate is strong acid. It releases one proton. Once it releases one proton, um, this guy, by sulfate is not one of strong acid, right? Because it's not one of strong acid, but still it has hydrogen. It's an acid, but it'll be weak acid. Because it's a weak acid, this guy in water will dissociate only partially. So you're gonna have to use double arrow, and then it'll release proton, and like that. So for sul uh, sulfuric acid, it will be strong acid for only first proton. It will be acid for second proton. Okay. <coughs> what if uh, we're gonna have to mention this one later? But while while we are having this, if you react this guy, strong acid with strong base, what should you be like? Um, this guy releases one proton, after that there will be weak action. So first of this guy will react with uh, hydroxide ion forming water. Then this guy is remain as S, SO4 minus. This guy will have NaOH, but if you have lots of NaOH, there will be another OH minus. So there will be one other reaction going on, and again it make another water, and it makes like this. So although only first proton is strong acid, second one is not. If their partner is strong base, this reaction will go to completion, which means with a single arrow, and then you lose both proton. Both protons. Okay. It's a single arrow. We may talk about that a bit later again. Um, for now, this should be enough.
because uh, for strong axis, we, we know that this will completely uh, dissociate H plus Cl minus so whatever you have that is the completely dissociate like this but we actually will only partly dissociate right and then that's why we use double arrow because of some of those properties will come back to reactant we have a double arrow whenever you have a double arrow we mean that will be at equilibrium at equilibrium and if that's at equilibrium between the active product we can define equilibrium constant k equilibrium constant equilibrium constant k is defined by concentration of product divided by concentration of reactant Water concentration is not considered because it's in liquid phase. Whether it's a liquid phase, solid phase, that's not part of uh, equilibrium constant. So this is equilibrium constant for this weak axis. Now K represents equilibrium constant. And then most time, if you use concentration, it will be Kc, meaning uh, equilibrium constant using concentration. But to emphasize, our reactant is actually acid. We use A instead of C, because C is just kind of more general, but A is more specifying that is the acid reaction. Okay, so Ka. And then, as you can see, if acid is stronger, then there will be more of a dissociation. So you're going to have more product, which means you're going to have more proton ion. So you want to have more hydrogen ion. So if Ka value is strong, uh, no, strong actually will have higher Ka value because actually strong means you have more of dissociation and then you have more of this quantity. So Ka should be greater. For example, when you compare hydrochloric acid and what's the name of this acid? HNO2. Nitrous what acid? Nitrous acid? Nitrous acid. Yeah, nitrous acid. Nitrous acid, hydrofluoric acid. Uh, those two weak acid has K value. And if this is this is smaller. So this is a weaker acid. Okay? Um, in your handout, I just gave you like a, a, the list of weak acids with Ka value and Kb value. Those are extensible list of weak acids. Um, so you can use that for either um, your homework or some other purpose. Um, so why don't you why don't you try to write uh, Ka expression? Oh, did you guys? I have a question on that one. Sure, yeah. Like, when you said the one was smaller, you pointed to the one that was like 6.5 or something, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4. Mm -hmm. Is a smaller number than 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4? Yeah, this guy is smaller than that guy. Uh, in terms of the exponent, that's the same, equal. This guy is small. Isn't the lower the, the, the lower the concentration, the higher the pH? So, um, or the lo lower the pH is stronger than acid. Okay. Yeah, so what, what you said is right. If pH is smaller, it's more acid. So, isn't a bigger negative number? Yeah, more acid. Because pH 4 means uh, hydrogen concentration will be 10 to the minus 4, right? If this is smaller, mm -hmm. then um, this is smaller, but that's a negative exponent. So, that will be more you know, the dense concentration. More action. But here, this is Ka value is not pH scale. This is more like a uh, density. <coughs> so sometimes they may tell you pKa instead of Ka. Oh, okay. So it's, it's yeah. lower concentrated, so it's easy. Yeah. So um, this guy is uh, lower concent. Uh, this will be weaker actually compared to that guy. 
Or if the pk value is, let's, I'm going to make up a pk. Lower concentration though, right? Yes, if this is smaller, if ka value is smaller, that means you're going to have a smaller number here, okay. which means you will be called. That's a good question. So why don't you couple it? Uh, this expression. What's the answer for two? Question number two. B? Can you explain? Why B? So your reaction would be um, carbonic acid? Yeah, you already have Yeah, a uh, hydrogen concentration, so it would be a little yeah. more acid. Right. That's right. Yeah. Reactant, so you can identify your reactant as carbonic acid. So there's only one answer for that. This is carbonic acid, so you already have an answer. But now your reactant go through you know acid dissociation because you produce proton in product side, so it's acting as acid. That's why you need acid equilibrium cast. So this is only short version of the long list you have in, as, uh, in the supplemental material. So there will a lot of weak acid. You don't have to memorize it at all. You just memorize seven strong acid. Other than that, any compound start with the hydrogen, it will be likely, not always, it will be likely weak acid. And then just, you just drop hydrogen, then it's your conjugate phase. And then you're gonna have to uh, use a one less charge. Neutral compound you become negative ion. Okay, that's your conjugate phase. And so you should be able to write uh, for each compound how they dissociate uh, giving a proton. Okay. Let's say you have a. Uh, HF and H2S. So hydrofluoric acid, hydrosulfuric acid, because they are weak acid in the water, they dissociate just like this. Um, in this table, actually in the above is stronger acid compared to actually in the below. Because this is stronger acid, stronger acid, to this guy, um, that is more tendency it dissociate compared to this guy, right? So it produces more of hydrogen ion than compared to this one. Because this is uh, more likely to dissociate, that means that is less likely to come back compared to this guy, right? So that means its conjugate phase is. Um, I said opposite. Because it's more likely to dissociate, it's less likely to come back. So it's, in terms of conjugate base, this guy is stronger conjugate base compared to that guy. So it's completely opposite. If you have stronger acid, its conjugate base will be weaker than the other. You see? So that's just opposite. Okay. When you have the stronger acid, mm -hmm. and you 
stop doing the equilibrium and just said, okay, this goes one way, uh -huh. it can't go back the other way, or are you just saying it's 100% concentration? Um, anytime when we deal with weak axis, there is a reverse reaction. Yeah. They are coming back. Right, right. So that's why you use a double arrow. But uh, if this is stronger than the other axis, then there's a more likely uh, go through. Uh, so we are basically comparing those two reactions. Okay? They are both weak axis, they are both double arrow. But the thing is, this guy is more likely, compared to this guy, more likely go to this direction. So that means less likely come back. Mm -hmm. So both are weak axis. Yeah, just comparing it like relatively which one is stronger. Okay. Um, but the reason it's only one arrow when it's a super strong acid is yeah. it's just 100%. Yeah, when you use uh, one arrow, single arrow, that means it's we are 100% dissociation and you okay. never come back. Anywhere up to that, you gotta get it. <coughs> yeah, if you 100 dissociate, you just assume there's no coming back. One is strong, strong base out of this guy. When you look at this, which one is strongest base? Well, OAC relative. This is strongest base. Why? It's a weak axis. I, I, I think we. I think you you know the you know, answer and then you know uh, but the, you have to express in you know, a little more clearly. Your answer is right. Why this answer? I think you you, you have a good understanding actually. You have to just say. It. Okay, this is strong to base because uh, let's consider you know con so conjugate action to find out conjugate action you're gonna have to add H plus right. So this guy, conjugate base, uh, conjugate X is HNO3, this one is HOAC, HF, HC7H5O2, HNO2. So these are all axes, and then the K value for this axis are given. When you compare this guy, this is smallest number, okay? This is smallest number out of four. So this is weakest, weakest action. They are all weak action, but this is weakest action. If this is weakest action, it's conjugate base, it should be strongest base. That's why conjugate base of OAC is strongest base. And so then, which one is next strong base then? Uh, so here, this one is next weakest axis, which means this guy should be next strongest base. Okay. Which one is weakest base then? F minus. Which one is weakest? <coughs> Weakest base. F minus. F minus. Among this, this guy is strong acid, right? Relatively. So conjugate base of this guy is this. So this may be weakest base among four. That's true. But we have one more. There's a four example. There's one, two, three, four, five. This guy, this is the conjugate base of that guy. And this guy is strong acid. Because this is strong acid, there's no K value available. This is 100% dissociate, that's why we do not have any data here. If this is strong acid, its conjugate base should be weakest. Among four, this is the weakest. But when you have this guy, this guy is the weakest base. So when you have a test, be careful. There might be something like this guy. 
Um, now we are not given any data of k value. Which one is which is the base here? C L minus. You are right. Why? Because it's a strong acid. Yeah. Because it's conjugate acid is HCl, this conjugate acid is water, conjugate acid is ammonium. When you compare this, we know this guy is one of strong acid. So we just know, without thinking any other guy, this is strongest acid, then make it, this one is weakest base. Okay? Then between two, between two, which one is strongest base? So this will be weakest. So which one is stronger between two? Huh? This guy? Oh, this guy? Why? Uh, yeah, you can say that. Because we, we, we just always hydroxide strong base. Yeah. Um, in terms of acidity, Water is just considered neutral. Ammonium is acidic. So because this is uh, less acidic, that means it's a stronger base. Okay. But you know hydroxide is strong base. So you can say that. But sometimes you have to compare with the other guy. Okay. So um, sometimes we have to calculate what will be pH, what will be hydro concentration when you are given acid. So if you are given strong acid, it's easy because whatever strong acid is, let's say you have two molar concentration given, 100 completely associated. So this concentration will be just same. And the pH will be just, uh, pH means <coughs> no logarithm of hydro concentration, so we can just say this number, and you put into calculation, you get the number. But if that's a weak acid, it's not so direct. You have to do some kind of setup. You already did icebox uh, problem. That's what we're gonna have to do. So. This was an example of strong acid. So if you use a calculator, you're going to have that number. It works out just six feet. Okay. Actually, why don't you why don't you why don't you do this? It's a strong acid. What's the concentration of acid? I don't know if I'm confused or if that was written incorrectly, but it has two sig figs, right? And your answer is three. Uh, remind me your name. Lindsay. Lindsay. I intentionally made a mistake. I said that if you find any mistake I make, you're going to get special bonus points. Oh, all right. <laughs> right? So... 
um, p in pH scale, there is two sig phase. So when I calculate a uh, concentration, there should be only two sig phase. So your answer is not bad. I'm well, you may get partial credit still, but more accurate answer is 2.8 and to my third or less. Do you have any question? Um, so that was strong axis. Strong axis is more like you know straightforward. If you have a weak axis. Uh, we're going to use ice box. Um, so, we have ascentic axis, which means weak axis. Initially, we have 0 0.30 molar concentration. Once it dissociates, some of them will disappear. Some of them, right? Because it dissociates. So, let's say X amount will uh, dissociate. Then, Initially, we didn't have uh, any of this guy. So I means at initial condition. C means it changed. So X amount dissociate, then you create X amount of that guy. So X more, X more relative B, you know, added on the product side. So at equilibrium, because the double arrow, it will reach equilibrium. At equilibrium, uh, concentration will be a little less because you lose certain amount of dissociation. So equilibrium constant K, because this is actually this Ka, is product concentration over reaction concentration. Okay. But we are given K value. K value is 1.8, 1.8, 1.8, 10 to the minus 14. Uh, that's a small number. So Ka, mean, Ka is in the, the fraction, right? In the expression, that is a fraction. Because this number is very small compared to 1, that means uh, your numerator should be small number. X will be small number. So you can assume, you can assume this X is smaller, a lot smaller than 0 0.30. You can just approximate 0 0.30 without that negative X. This is approximation. So then, to find out X, you can just multiply uh, this guy to Ka value. So X is, X scale is equal to 0 0.30 times 1.8, 10 to the minus fifths. So x will be square root of this number. So one number is that. So inside of square root, that square root, 20 <coughs> times a, that's five, that number, I got 2.3, 2, 3, blah, 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 10 to the minus third, or relative. Since I have two sig fig here and there, my answer will be 2.3, 10 to the minus third, or relative. If they ask what's the concentration of hydrogen ion, H plus, the answer will be, answer would have been 2.3 times 10 to my third. But they are not asking that number, right? They are not asking that number, they are asking pH. So we're gonna use that number to find out pH. So pH is negative logarithm of hydrogen concentration. So now to logarithm of hydrogen concentration. Do you put this number or this number? 
Which number do you have to call? So hydrogen concentration is, I find out answer is this, okay? Because there's a two CP calculation. Well, if this is not final answer, and then you have to do more calculation, do not use this number, okay? If this question asks hydrogen concentration, you're gonna write such an answer, but if this is only in the uh, intermediate step to the final answer, do not use that number. Instead of, you use this, uh, this number, original this number. So, the version 2.323, blah, blah, 10 to the minus third, and pH will be relative low of that number is 2.6338. Um, but we saw there is two sig b. Because two sig b, our answer should be you round right here. Because this is not significant, this is significant. So your answer is 2.63. Two if you put this number, instead of uh, more digit, you may still have same answer. But sometimes you may not have same answer, okay? Sometimes it's less accurate. Okay. Uh, do you have anything so far? Okay, so 2.63, is that two sixes or two decimal places and three sixes? This is two six three. Two six three and two decimal places. So it's two six three. Okay. The reason is that this is a pH scale. Okay. In pH scale, first number is not significant. Okay. So if this is some num some other quantity, it would have been three six. Okay. This is somewhat relevant, but it's not the same. It's a different problem. They are asking uh, K value. Uh, why don't you try it? It's a little bit different style, but why don't you try it yourself first?
Do you have any question? Does you, anybody have a different answer or? If your constant do not have a unit, So KA, KA, uh, which was, uh, if you have any weak action, so this is generic name of weak action. Weak action support have hydrogen first, and then something else, this is weak action. Then K expression is weak action as a reactant, it will dissociate to give proton and less token. So we just said, if it among weak acid, some weak acid stronger than other weak acid, then Ka value is greater, right? Why? Because it dissociates more to give more <coughs> uh, high, uh, hydrogen ion, <coughs> then Ka value will be greater. So Ka is an indication of how much they dissociate. But there's another definition of how much they dissociate, that's percent ionization. Okay? It's relevant, but it's not the same thing. Percent ionization is when you have HA weak acid initially subnormal, how much of that guy actually dissociate? Right? So let's say I have 100% starting with a weak acid. Later, I may have only 5% dissociate, 95% just remain. So then, the initial concentration is actually you need to do molar concentration. So in terms of percentage, that will be 95. No, this will be 100. Initially, 100. And then later, this guy has only 5. Then this will be 5% dissociation. That makes sense, right? Out of a certain amount, so that could be concentration, molar concentration. Why don't I use actually uh, two molar concentration? And then later, I found Later, I find this guy as like a, um, let's say, point 0.1 molar concentration. What percentage is that? That's a lot. Okay. So if we use this guy, uh, this concentration of 0.1 divided by initially 200%, then it will be uh, point. What is it? That is 10 or 5 percent. Okay, that makes 5 percent. I didn't mean it, but that 2.5 percent. Right. So, so that makes sense, right? So, they may say same thing because higher percent ionization means it's stronger action, right? Larger K also means it's a stronger action. Why do we have to use two different definitions if that means the same thing? Well, let me ask you this. I have a weak action pouring in the water. Okay? To have more proton in water, do I have to put more weak action or less weak action? Is that clear what I'm asking? All right. I have a water. I'm going to put weak X in the water. Weak X will dissociate. It will give proton ion, right? Which makes an X. So if I want to have more H plus in water, do I have to put more weak X, less weak X? More. more. OK. I'm going to change the question then. You have water. When I put more weak acid or less weak acid, in which situation it dissociates more? Less. Hmm? Less? So, weak acid dissociates in water, right? In which case it dissociates more? You put less acid, more acid. More acid. Neither? Neither? 
Okay. Both quantity mean how much they dissociate, right? If we more dissociate, K is greater. If we more dissociate, percentile energy will be greater. Okay, let's do some math. Um, the weak axis, when this guy dissociate, KA value is equal to in the ice box. Uh, let's say this is initial, initially concentrated is this. Okay? Initially. And then at equilibrium, you're gonna lose X amount. So at equilibrium, uh, this, this is concentrated, this is back. So my KA value is, um, I'm gonna use this one as hydrogen concentration, so, H plus scale over H A I minus X. Normally for big X, this is negligible. You can write as H A I H plus scale. So from ice, using ice box and then H plus concentration is K times H A initial concentration inside of scale, right? That's this one. So, I can put this information over here. Instead of H plus equation, uh, equilibrium, I can put this guy over there. Then, percent ionization will be equal to that. Do you see that? This is the algebra. So, if we put this guy over here, divide by that, you have this. Are you following? Okay, because I didn't hear any answer. I'm going to put over there. So that divided by HA initial times 100%. That's what percent ionization. If I use square root top and bottom, then I have Ka, HAI, HAI square times 100%. So this, this is square, so I'm going to cancel one of this into that, right? The ending of this, this region. Okay? So now we have mathematical information. So let's look at this guy and this equation. And I'm going to ask you a question again. I have water. I'm going to put big acid, okay, to produce more proton, make it more acid. Do I have to put more big acid, less big acid? More big acid. The initial, this is concentration of Acid I put in the water. If you put more, it will produce more. Right? Now, second question was which one dissociates more, right? Put more acid or <coughs> less acid? If I put less, if I put less, it dissociates more. Okay? So if you put less, it dissociates more. So if you want to have more hydrogen ion, like more acid, you have to put more. So that's the difference between these two guys. It seems like the same, same thing, right? Large K means it's strong acid. Large percent ionization also means it's strong acid. But there's some difference. Okay. By the way, you don't have to drive this equation. You don't have to. Just uh, remember this uh, definition. This definition is very straightforward. Out of initial uh, acid, how much dissociation? So that's percent dissociation. This is just from ice box. So if you know those two, you can reach to this equation. Do not memorize it. I cannot memorize this one. But I know this, so I can write this one very easily. Okay? I want you to do the same thing. Why 
Why don't you check your computer ionization? This is the last slide today. Today, if you have any questions, let me know. I am going to answer. 